up divers? In today's video, we're going to be talking about what to do if you run out of air while scuba diving. You die. I'm just messing with you. Seriously, we have some really important skills to talk about, so let's get to it. Welcome to our channel, Asul Unlimited, where we teach all things scuba diving. My name is Sarah, and I wanted to jump in here to talk about these important safety skills because there's a lot of misconception out there about scuba diving being a dangerous sport. And yes, there are accidents in scuba diving, but if you compare scuba diving to other adventure sports, it's actually quite safe. And it's even safer when you get the proper training, especially when it comes to the safety skills. Now, when we're going scuba diving, obviously we have a tank. And of course this tank is the limiting factor for the time that you can spend underwater because there's only a certain amount of air. A standard scuba cylinder is 12 liters. It gets filled to 200 bar or 3000 PSI. And we have a gauge that we use to let us know how much air is left in the tank. During your open water course, you'll be taught how to check and monitor your air. That's the very first introduction to safety that you get in your open water course. By just being aware of how much air is left in your tank, you're going to avoid running out of air in the first place. And that's really how you want to be as a diver. You want to be conscious of how much air is left in your tank. Therefore, our very first skill is the most ideal of all the skills that we'll talk about in this video, and that is a normal ascent when you run low on air, okay? This can be the sign for running low on air. That's also the sign for 50. Sometimes people just do five, some people do this, but 50 bar is low on air. You can see that low on air in a lot of SPGs uh, with the red portion of the needle of the gauge. When you are low on air, that means that you should be able to come up, do your safety stop, that's five meters for three minutes, okay? And then come to the surface safely using your own air tank, your own air supply. I'm all out of love. I'm so lost without you. This one is obviously the most ideal because you are not relying on anyone else, right? You're paying attention to your air as you dive, and when you get low, you come up, do your safety stop, and get to the surface. Now, sometimes it can happen that you maybe get distracted or the environment is a little bit challenging and you are not checking your air so often and maybe you do run out of air. The safest way to deal with that scenario is by sharing air with your buddy. Whenever we're diving, we should always be close to a buddy. So if we run out of air, then we just go to our buddy and we share air with them. Whenever this does happen, because it does, you know, the it's this is a human sport, so you know, we're bound to make mistakes on occasion, right? But we can avoid a more serious problem if we just keep with that general rule of staying close with your buddy. You don't have to be right on top of each other, but being close enough that you know that you can share air if something were to happen. When we share air, we need to make sure that that is the end of the dive. Okay, that's that means we go up. I can't even tell you the amount of times that I've seen people sharing air and continuing to dive. This is very, very dangerous. You don't want to do that because you're relying on one tank for the two of you. Okay, if something goes wrong, then both of you are in trouble. Okay, so if you end up sharing air with someone, that means you link up, you connect, you communicate, and you go up. There's no messing around, okay? Even if it doesn't feel like stressful, like you see that you're getting low on air, maybe you have, you know, 20 or 10 bar left, you're still able to breathe off your regulator, but that's still an emergency. That's still something that you need to take seriously. So when you share air, you are needing to go up. Now, if you happen to run out of air and your buddy is further away from you than the surface. This is when we get into the CESA, Controlled Emergency Swimming Ascent. Hopefully, if this were to happen to you, the idea is that you would be towards the end of the dive, hence running out of air, and you would be shallow. So if this does happen, you want to maintain all of the weight that you have, your weight belt, your integrated weights, everything stays in place, your regulator stays in your mouth, you deflate your BCD and you exhale from your mouth and you kick all the way up 
to the surface. The reason why I say that you keep all of the equipment in place is because this is a controlled ascent. Okay, that means that we can regulate the speed at which we go up. This is much, much, much safer than our next option, which we'll talk about now. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell so that you don't miss any of our future videos. This option is really a, wow, there a lot of things went wrong and this is a not so great situation to be in, but it is good to understand the skill so that if you do need it, you can get out of the scenario alive. The buoyant ascent. This means that we release our weight, so either your weight belt or your integrated weights, and we do a buoyant ascent. That means that releasing that weight, we start to come up, okay? This is not controlled, therefore it is not as safe. The way that this skill is taught is that if you are deeper than nine meters, you've run out of air and you're much deeper than you would like to be for a controlled emergency swimming ascent, right there in the beginning, it's taught that you drop your weights and you just make that buoyant ascent up to the surface. You know, when we talk about the buoyant ascent, a lot of the same things that we talk about in the CESA are shared, okay? So you keep the regulator in, um, you exhale the whole way up, right? Because the main thing that we need to be concerned about with ascents, and especially emergency ascents, are lung overexpansions, okay? So when we do emergency ascents, we do have the possibility of getting DCS. So you don't want to compound the problem by also having a lung over expansion. And you can avoid having lung over expansion just by exhaling as you go up to the surface. I personally, if I were to get into this kind of scenario where I run out of air and I am deeper than nine meters, I would personally go... <laughs> Trevallis are hunting. <laughs> I would personally start with the CESA and kick and control my ascent as much as possible, right? Looking up, exhaling. And if I see that it's just not gonna happen towards the end, then I would release my weight. Now I say that because A, I know that I have very good breath control and B, I, know that I react calmly in an emergency. I've had enough experience that I know that I would be able to handle that. For beginners, this isn't the easiest thing to accomplish. That's why in the courses, if you've learned how to do a buoyant ascent, they just tell you get rid of the weight and get up because when you are stressed out, you don't think rationally and you can, you can learn more about that. If you wanna watch our diving accident video, the link is in the description below. You can see there, and we're gonna do more of those diving accident videos here in the future because I think they're really helpful for people. But you can see that when people are stressed out, they start to get into panic mode. And panic mode has no rhyme or reason. You don't understand the world anymore. And your, your main concern is that you get somewhere where you can breathe and you can calm down again. That's the reason why the rescue course is such useful training because you do get to practice what it is like to deal with someone in panic. You really don't get the full experience until you are confronted with someone who is actually in panic, but it gives you the knowledge base so that you can react appropriately. So that's the buoyant ascent. Finally, one skill that isn't really taught much anymore, you really only see it in the dive master course, is a buddy breathing ascent. And the reason why it's not taught is because it's quite complex. It's difficult to accomplish, especially with people who don't have experience with it. It's not, it's not done very often, but I wanted to mention it because it is an option. A buddy breathing ascent is where you ascend with someone and you are sharing one regulator. So you usually take two breaths, one person takes two breaths, and then they share, they give that regulator to the other person, they take two breaths and then back. Okay, so there's a lot of coordination that's involved here and there's a lot of regulator clearing. Okay, so if somebody is not super confident, you know, they're an open water diver 
they're not as confident with their skills, this can be, this can cause even more stress than just doing a regular CISA up to the surface. The reason why it's been taught in the past is because maybe the alternate regulator of the rescue diver is faulty and so you're just sharing that one regulator. Of course, now, you know, we're in the world of COVID and so you wouldn't wanna share that one regulator back and forth. <coughs> All of these techniques are immediately relative to your level of comfort in the water because you do not want to put yourself in a situation where you do get panicked. All right, so I hope that this was helpful and lets you see that Scuba diving is not as scary as some of the videos on the internet make it seem. As long as you get proper training with people and you get experience, it's really quite a safe sport. That being said, there is a lot of bad training out there. So, you know, you've probably heard of accidents and things happening because the divers don't know any better. So I hope that if you're a diver, you will take the information in this video, maybe go out and practice some of these skills just to make sure that they're, you know, well infused in your training and in your knowledge base. And for those of you who haven't gotten certified yet, hopefully having this information will give you the confidence to make that step. Really, it's all about being conservative and paying attention while scuba diving. Being aware of your surroundings and being well-trained will eliminate the majority of the risk that is involved in scuba diving. All right, so if you like this video, give it a big ol' thumbs up. Leave us a comment down below if you have any questions about these out of air scenarios and make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell so that you don't miss any of our future videos. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Hey friends. Did you hit that subscribe button? It's just down there, so, you know, hit it so that you don't miss our videos. And um, make sure you check out our other videos, you know, just over there. There's a couple of really cool ones there, so just click, click, go into the next one. Ah, <laughs> there we go. Okay, cool.